How much space do sheep actually need? And can you raise sheep on just one acre? These are great questions. When you understand the science of sheep, the science of grass, the answer becomes very easy. So today we're gonna to talk about everything to figure out that answer for yourself, your grass, your pasture, your sheep. And for those of you that just want an easy answer, I've got an easy answer for you too. So it's natural to wonder how many sheep per acre can your land support? The answer to that question is really what leads a lot of people to go for sheep. So for me, I was interested in cows, but I didn't have enough space for cows. My first property was one acre. Cows take about one to one and a half acres per cow. But the answer for sheep is not quite as clear. But both cows and sheep are ruminants, which means that they thrive on grass or pasture, forbs, green stuff. So the question is, how much space do you need to have to ensure that you can actually rotate them and ensure that they always have grass under their feet? Before I say that, let me say it depends on a lot of things. Depends on your rainfall, the species of grass, the time of year, what kind of sheep you have, what part of the country or the world that you're in. There's a lot, there's a lot of things that it depends on. But start with two ewes per acre. You could go more. If you're positive that your grass is great and your land can support it, you can start with more. But the safest, surefire bet, even if you have the most desolate, terrible pasture, two ewes per acre. I believe that any acreage through regenerative means can get up to four ewes or more per acre. And again, this is rotationally grazing them. So that means if you have 10 acres, see what your land can support and then work your way up. You could probably get up to 40 ewes within just a few years, which is good timing because ewes make more ewes. But start with two ewes and their lambs per acre. So what's the deal with rotational grazing? Why do you have to move the sheep? Why can't you just give 20 sheep 10 acres and come back when it's time to harvest your lamb crop? Well, like all things, it's complicated. So think about how nature is innately designed. Think about big ruminants. Uh, so let's, let's use the American bison and the American Midwest prairie. The bison would travel in large herds, right? And it would be driven from one place to the next, either by predator or weather or seasonality. They travel hundreds or maybe thousands of miles in a single season and they would travel in dense populations, completely graze down that area, and be forced to move to the next area. So we're reenacting what nature wants to do naturally, except you need to act as mother nature. So it's not predators driving them, it's not a herd of wolves, it is you with some electric fence moving your sheep from one paddock or one area in your paddock to another. I've got five Katahdin rams right now. They're probably about six months old. They're very skittish. They're very hard to rotate. But you know what? I moved them across uh, the easement yesterday with the help of my wife. We got it done. Um, took us about a half an hour, but that's where they were. And here's where they are today. So let's look at their setup right here. So I would, I would guess it's probably about 80 feet by 80 feet. And... So you're, if you're doing the math, you're like, wow, five rams um, on 80 feet by 80 feet, uh, that's way less than you know, an acre. And that's the point. That is what mob grazing is. That is what rotational grazing is. It's taking animals and condensing their efforts onto a single location for a set period of time. For these guys, this spot is about a week. So nature's designed this elegant system, again, going back to the bison rotating themselves, basically. When nature does things, it's just pretty and perfect and elegant. When you think about why we're supposed to do it and the benefits of us doing it for our animals, it's the same benefits that were passively being done for nature. So number one, it gives the grass ample time to come back. It is better for the earth. You densely fertilize it by just having that many animals trample the grass, urinate on the grass, drop their manure on the grass, eat the grass, obviously. All that disturbance and fertilization drops the grass down to a very manageable growth zone. Just to give you an idea, this is where the sheep just were. So look at that grass, or rather, look at the lack of grass. This is what happens in a tight mob gray setup. The sheep eat the grass, and then you move them. Best case scenario for us is 60 day rest. That's about what I've been able to achieve here just because we have four acres of pasture and five ramps. We have ample space right now. 
If anything, I'm giving them too much space at this time. 60 days is preferable. Um, you can get away with three weeks, three or four weeks, but 30 to 60 days is better. It helps the grass come back. And the next reason, it offloads the parasite load. This video is not strictly about parasites, but you can't talk about how much space do sheep need without bringing up parasites. That is the biggest reason why you need land, why you need to rotate, is because all ruminants have some parasite load. That's just, that's just a fact. What you don't want is that parasite's egg maturing into a larva and being reconsumed by sheep. So there is a, there's a few days where it's basically a risk factor. Okay, now a word to my small time producer friends. I've got 12 acres of land, four acres of strictly pasture. Let's talk about those people that have a lot less. I mentioned before that I had one acre and I wondered if I could raise sheep. Well, guess what you can, and I absolutely did. You need to realize is that works in a certain climate. I'm in North Carolina now, very humid. Lots of rain, lots of heat, perfect parasite weather. In Utah, where I started my sheep journey, not a lot of rain, plenty of heat, which was not good for parasites, which actually makes it great weather for sheep. I did have to buy a lot of hay, and that's okay. If you just want hell or high water to raise sheep and just raise your own grass-fed lamb, more power to you. Do it. You could do it on a small scale. You could do it on one acre. You're just going to be buying hay for them. If you go that route, know that there are, there's a lot of products out there that are going to try to tell you that you need to push grain or a sheep feed on your sheep. Don't listen to it. If all you're trying to do is provide food for your family on a small acreage, it's just not worth it. Go with hay, uh, buy you know one fence from Premier One, rotate them when you can, supplement with hay, give them the minerals, and you'll be set. Don't overthink it. Real food over bagged food every day of the week for sheep. How many sheep did I have on that one acre? At one time, I had five ewes plus their lamb, 12 total sheep, uh, five ewes and seven lambs. So. You can do it. I promise you can do it. So how much space do sheep require? Not as much as a cow. Start with two ewes per acre if you want to do it rotationally. Small timers um, can do more. Just know that you'll be supplementing with hay. I'm PJ with the High Mountain Homestead, and I'll see you on the next video.